Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ian. Uh, I work on the High Altitude Balloon Team, and uh, I'll show you our project. Uh, so we have a big group, so we kind of subdivided ourselves into a couple of teams to make sure that we can streamline all the process. But essentially, what we do is we launch high altitude balloons. Uh, we have a high altitude balloon, we attach a parachute to it, and we attach a payload box to it, in which we try to include as many experiments as possible. This year, our big goal and experiment is to collect meter dust from the Percy meter shower. Uh, now, additionally to that, we also have continuing experiments going on, such as pressure that we measure, uh, sound level that we measure, temperature that we measure, and of course, a numerous amount of GPSs so that we can actually refine our, uh, our project once we launch it. Uh, right now, we're finishing up for summer two. We're, we're finalizing our projects. We're pretty much finished with printing. I think our last piece is printing right now. Uh, we are finishing our circuit boards, uh, we're finishing our software. More into that now. All right, so hi everybody. My name is Gary. I'm working on the CAT team. So what we did in summer one, it was like, uh, we actually 3D modeled the, the, 3D modeled the model for the, for the actually high altitude balloon. So we, uh, can you show it one? <laughs> so what we did is that we did it in Fusion 360 and we overcome a lot of problems, but now we have a, a actual model that actually works. Now the goal right here is open the window in a certain altitude so we can capture uh, media uh, dust. Josh, do you want to explain the, the problems that we overcame, please? I don't know what you guys did to my model. <laughs> um, yeah, so since summer one, um, most of the problems we've had to overcome has been the minutia of actually producing a project, um, overcoming things like, do we have filament that isn't going to just crap out on us? Um, and the second model is almost done. Ian was right, we are printing the last moment as we speak. Um, <coughs> it's the easiest production I've ever done. I'm working on it right now. No hands. Um, <laughs> But yeah, the drive mechanism works as intended, so we've cut all the weight we need to, and we're at a good place with the model. All right, so we modified the model for the Fusion 360. Find out there. So our Fusion 3, yeah, we modified the uh, Fusion 360 model for the um, Hero 3 Plus cameras we're using to improve accessibility and functionality. Holes were added to access the power button and record button, as well as. Um, as well as view the um, display screen and power indicator light. We also added uh, so we also added support pegs to help lock the camera in place. Also, courtesy of uh, well, also courtesy of and with the aid of um, Professor Balzerot, we were able to modify the carbon fiber rods we're using to anchor the peach drift assemblies to the payload, specifically by drilling holes in them for screws and all that. Hello, my name is Ron, and I'm working on a software team. Um, we conducted a vacuum chamber test, uh, and it included placing our circuit board with a temperature sensor, pressure sensors, GPS inside of a uh, vacuum chamber, and we lowered um, the pressure to as well as to tour, uh, which would equal to about 130,000 feet up uh, in the atmosphere, and we encountered a few problems that we were very happy to find out about before the flight uh, rather than after. Um, first of all, our pressure sensor didn't um, uh, didn't present uh, accurate data, and we think there is a bit of problem with uh, our equation, which we are working on right now. And uh, second problem was that our, uh, our GPS failed while in the chamber. Um, it was just by chance, but none of our data was locked because um, it depended on GPS. So we are refining our code to make sure that we are still logging the data even if um, the uh, GPS loses its signal for a few seconds. Um, yeah. uh, Greg, I've been trying to figure out the multitude of issues with the cameras and why they've been failing. I too did vacuum chamber tests to find out that I also brought it down to two tour, which is about one in over 380 atmospheres. And I found out the cameras don't like operating at that low pressure. I found out one camera keeps on failing, so I'm still trying to figure out how to solve that. So the cameras are 
shoddy at high atmosphere and low pressures. But we're resolving that. We've also, after summer one, done heat. Heat was the original issue. We thought we were failing. We did three different materials to try to reflect and get rid of the heat. We did two different types of aluminum foil and mylar. <coughs> mylar seemed to produce the best results, removing 10 degrees of heat. Hey, I'm Vito. So uh, we started printing our circuit boards, which we're going to be flying with the payload of the balloon. Uh, we're using the Volterra V1 circuit board printer that's in the lab over there. Uh, we've gone through a number of iterations so far as we sort of uh, try to perfect the circuit. The circuit itself is good right now, but we're having some issues with the printer. Um, we're having issues trying to get the solder to adhere to the silver-based ink that the printer uses to uh, print out the pads and the traces. So we're experimenting with some solutions right now. We're trying to increase the width of the traces and uh, the pads, hoping that we can get uh, better adherence for the components. But other than that, the circuit is good to go. And uh, once we get this perfected, it should be good. All right, hello, I'm Malcolm. I work with the software team. Um, some goals that we've accomplished as working with the software. Uh, we added an LED strip here for indicators to let us know that the sensors, that the GPS, the SD card is working. Um, we used to just have three regular LEDs, but the LED strip gives us more um, ways to show that everything is working. Um, another thing we tried to do um, was we tried to make the doors open simultaneously. Right now the doors will open one at a time, um, so we wrote code to try to make them open simultaneously. However, we found that not enough current was going towards both the motors, so the motors would stall. So we reverted back to having the doors open one at a time. Another thing was our GPS originally was parsing data incorrectly, um, and we found out that that was probably due to the library we were using. So we changed to a different library called uh, Neo GPS, and we've been getting more accurate altitude data <coughs> as a result. Uh, as Lewis has been saying, multitude of times that we do once we actually launch we will need a lot of help uh, right now we're looking to launch uh, August Friday August 9th Monday August 12th or Tuesday August 13th uh, we will be sending out a form uh, hopefully in the next afternoon like Monday or Tuesday uh, so if we, anybody wants to volunteer and spend the day with us have food and have a good time we'll, uh, we'll send out that form soon Professor Griffo is barbecuing so. <laughs> so, yes. Thank you very much. <laughs>